Hi, it's Olga. I keep on playing with alcohol inks and again I'm going to combine the alcohol ink background with the die cutting to create a card. The idea of a card is very simple, but there is actually a couple of uh, tips and tricks that I would like to share as I go. To create a background, I will need one sheet of translucent UPO paper, one color of alcohol ink, which is watermelon, and some blending solution. So first I'm creating a puddle of blending solution on my paper, then adding in uh, some drops of watermelon ink, and then I'm blowing it with a straw to spread on the sheet. Then I'm gonna let the ink dry and actually repeat the process on the other part of the paper. This way I'm covering up another portion of the paper with the ink and it's also overlapping the previous one, creating that marbling pattern. You can repeat this process as many times as you like, just don't forget to let the ink dry between the layers. If you feel you need to add more color to certain areas, just add more ink into the blending solution. And if you think there is too much color in certain areas, you just add more solution and just a tiny bit of ink as you are adding more layers. When you are finished layering the color, you have to let the ink dry completely. As my background is drying, I'm going to work on the rest of the card. I'm going to use some glossy black cardstock. It's already pre-cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm also using the second largest die from Rectangle Basics set by Memory Box, and that is going to create a thin one eighth of an inch frame for my card. All the tools and supplies I'm using are listed on my blog as well as in the description. To cut out the background, I'm going to use the largest die, which is exactly four and a quarter by five and a half, or you can just use a paper trimmer. Those Yupo paper sheets are actually pre-cut to five by seven inches. To attach a frame to the background, I'm going to use one eighth of an inch um, score tape which is the double-sided tape. I'm applying the tape at the wrong side all over the frame, then I'm going to peel off the backing and attach it to the card, making sure I'm aligning it really well with the edges. All I have to do now is to attach a sentiment and the focal image on top of the background. The dies I'm going to use are by Gumia Pen, it's a Swedish producer, and I have the sentiment die cut of the glossy black cardstock, and the Flamingo is die cut out of gold mirror cardstock. I'm arranging the dies on a card front to find the best position for them, and then I'm going to attach them one by one. I have applied some double-sided tape to the flamingo's body and for more intricate areas I'm using the liquid glue. Basically I'm using the same adhesives for UPO as I use for a regular cardstock. Now I am attaching the sentiment with the liquid glue. I'm using tacky glue by Scotch at the moment. Then I'm also going to inlay that little heart that I have die cut out of gold mirror cardstock. Now I need to create some ground for the flamingo and I'm going to use one portion of this um, large covered die by memory box. I'm all only going to die cut one of the puddles. And then I'm going to use only those negative pieces. Normally, if you die cut the entire die, they are going to waste, but not in this case. And again, to attach them, I'm going to use um, my needle applicator bottle filled with tacky glue.
To attach this front panel to a card base, I have used the double-sided tape again and um, I was not sure if it's going to show through the paper or not. So to be on the safety side, I only applied uh, this tape behind the die cuts. After I have it attached, all there is left to do is to add some sequins and my card is finished. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope I inspired you to try some new techniques and materials. Have a fantastic day and I'll be seeing you again really soon.